Hello, 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 everyone. I am coming to you live from Tanzania, Africa today. Um, this is always a highlight of my week. I truly do mean that. Um, so thank you for joining. Uh, please do drop in the chat your name and where you're from. Your name will automatically come up, but let me know where you're tapping in from. It'll be good for those in the room to, to know that as well. Um, I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about today, um, and that being scale your business, right? Um, because the numbers don't lie, right? Black women are starting businesses at the fastest rate um, out of all other ethnic groups for women-owned businesses. We, we truly are. That trend has been going for a very, very long time. Hi, Kristen from Charleston. I love you so much. It's so good to see you, mama. Um, we are uh, heavily, heavily concentrated in the healthcare sector. 38% um, of black owned businesses are, are in that sector, right? So we're there, right? Uh, the numbers do not lie. Uh, Blessing from Brooklyn, New York. What's up, BK? Thank you so much for coming in today. Um, so we're starting businesses and anecdotally, as well as statistically, we're starting businesses because we don't have a choice. <laughs> right. We don't have other in any other choices. Some of us have been laid off. Some of us have been underpaid. Right. Um, some of us have to be creative. Right. Because of constraints with child care, et cetera, and not having enough funds. Right. To peanut butter our needs across or our resources across our needs. Right. But some of us um, are doing it because we just want to take a bet on ourselves. And some of, some of it is all of the above. Right. Um, hey, Nina, Nina, I'm so sorry. I, 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 every time I listen to Nina Simone and I see you, Nina, uh, I say your name wrong. I'm so sorry. I love you to death. That's my cousin, y'all. Um, but the numbers don't lie. So we are, uh, starting businesses. Don't, don't get that fooled. But the problem is, guys, we don't understand scale. We understand growth very well. It's very, very linear, right? If a number gets bigger, right, larger in quantity, that is growth, right? Um, but increased revenue, I love you too, Nina. Increased revenue does not mean increased profitability. Why? Because your expenses can increase by the same amount or more if you're not careful, right? So, so scale is so, so, so important. All the big companies understand it, right? All the behemoths, so the, the giants, the, the, the targets, the Walmarts, the Amazons, they understand it, but the streets don't, right? Um, and it's not a matter of us not being smart enough to do it. It's just that we just don't know, right? Uh, so I'm really excited about diving into this one. Um, as always, if you have questions, uh, definitely drop it in the chat. I watch that very, very heavily. Um, I don't want to just be lecturing to you, right? If you have any questions, drop it in the, in the chat, and I promise I'll stop real time. Um, but before I dive into um, the slides, I just want to say, and, and this is really in my heart, so I don't know who needs to hear this, but I have to um, say this. There will never be the perfect time, but you are still called. OK, the time will never, ever, ever be perfect. Like every single uh, <laughs> thing on your list that you put together that must be true before you take a risk on yourself. You will never see all of those come those things uh, align at the same time. Right. But you are called and you need to take the risk on yourself. Do not wait for somebody to validate you to say, oh, OK, you're up. I, I, I'm going to take a risk on you and pull you all the way up the same way I pulled up, you know, this white son of a CEO, <laughs> right? Uh, don't wait on that validation um, because nobody's coming to save us. Sis, I'm, I'm gonna say that one more time. Nobody is coming to save us. We must save ourselves. That is this tribe, this, tri this tribe is formed um, intentionally with purpose, right? That's you for yourself so that your family has a different perspective on life and understand that they do not have to be a part of a pipeline system <laughs> that's pumping our intellectual brains into these big systems that don't care about us, right? Um, that's us taking our knowledge, me taking my knowledge on the, on the financial forefront and recreating the rules and say, I decide how you get this loan, right? That's, that's you in healthcare 
uh, dismantling, dismantling the false theories that are in place of you know, our BMI should be the same BMI as somebody of a different race because we're obviously built the same. We're not, right? So you're overweight, you're lazy. No, 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 no. Like we have to build the table because nobody's coming to save us. Um, so I hope that's resonated with someone. Again, I felt very, 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 very led um, to say that. And I, I promise you'll land on your feet. How do I know? Because you've never not made it. We got great grandmamas who made something out of nothing and you built from that same blood. Hear me. That same blood is running through your veins, right? Your parents made it despite despite my mother being six years removed from segregation, six years, like Jim, Jim Crow was outlawed just six years before she was born, right? In 1970, yet she somehow made it, right? And, and, that, and, and my mom, for those of you who don't know, has passed, but like in what she accomplished in her time here, <laughs> right? And the legacy that she left on me, like y'all, <laughs> uh, we are already ready. So do not wait for the perfect time um you are called for this um if this is any help to anybody i have been capable for us for a long time but i walked away completely um from what i was doing in corporate america six months ago uh literally just six months ago <laughs> literally just six months ago was killing it crushing it better than my peers who were you know uh 30 years my senior and who knows how much money these people were making right these these white males they were my my counterparts but i walked away completely i didn't put up a fuss right i didn't i didn't say well don't you see me like don't you think you should take a risk when when i asked a direct question said oh, okay what's about to pop off after all all of this right here and I didn't hear what I needed to hear. Casey walked away. And of course, everybody's up in arms because just like, yo, like there is value there that, you know, but I walked away and I meant it. Right. And I took this knowledge to the streets and it's staying in the streets. Right. And, I, and I'm taking this knowledge further to Africa. Um, and, and, and this is six months we're talking about, y'all. Um, built this business. Didn't, did, didn't wait for me to be ready. Right. Just took a bet on myself. And I'm actually, in addition to my own businesses, I am now the chief credit officer of a a, a, a multi-million dollar tech company in uh, Kenya, and I'm standing up an operation in a whole other country out here in Africa. Me, a black woman, me, I'm doing this, right? So this is to say to you, and, and, and I am not a rocket scientist. I do not have a PhD. I do not have an MBA, right? Like I, I, I bet on myself that hard. <laughs> like, um, I just, I know that I'm capable. I know that you're capable. Every one of you, there are five of you in the room. If you have not dropped your location in here, please do, because I want to know where you're from. Um, I love for the other people to, to get to know where you're from as well. But um, if you are here, I know that you are intentional about refining, right? Your, your skills, uh, increasing your acumen, right? Really taking your business to the next level. That is all it takes. That is all it takes. How do I know? Because we have all worked alongside the average Joe Blow, right? Or the sub, <laughs> the sub mediocre Joe Blow who didn't have our color of skin, right? Had a different, different gender and he was fine, had job security, right? So if you are who you are, if you are as powerful and as dope as you are, that is enough. That is the price of admission. And until we create, until we recreate these rules, our children and our children's children are going to continue to stub their toe like we have today. And that's unacceptable. Liana from Hopkins, that's home team right there, y'all. What's up? Um, so I, I, I'm just saying, go for it. Go for it. Stop waiting. Stop making excuses. God has you. Grace and mercy will follow you all of the days of your life. Um, you will heal. <laughs> You will find balance. You will find help. Uh, the universe will provide, but go for it. All right. Now that I've gotten that off, <laughs> um, we're going to dive into this. OK. And like I mentioned, ask questions as you have them. Uh, the topic for today is how to scale your business. OK, let me pull these slides up. Um, drop a one in the chat when you can see them. I want to make sure that everyone's seeing what I'm seeing. Drop a one in the chat. Um, if you can see, I'm so happy home team is in the house. Hopkins, South Carolina. Uh, I'm going to assume you went to LA too. Who, who, diamond mine. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nina. Okay, so Nina can see the screen. Okay, we're going to talk about, thank you, Blessing. Blessing can see the screen. We're going to talk about scaling your business. Okay, so I'm going to start. Asia's in the house. What's up, Asia? Um, 
All right. Hey, Diamond Mine. What's up? Um, so, oh, let me get to this thing so I can scale it. I'm going to start by asking you a question. If your business customers grew by 10 times tomorrow, would you be able to handle the inflow of customers? I need you to think on that for yourself. If you want to drop something in the chat, definitely do it. You don't have to. But a very real question I want you to chew on before we dive into this. Because this is the crux of why scale is important and why scale is different from growth. Okay? If your business customers grew by 10 times tomorrow, so let's say you have 15 today, right? And you have 150 all of a sudden tomorrow, right? So if something happens in your industry and all of a sudden everybody desperately needs what you have right say that regulation swings in a favorable direction right and all of a sudden people have an opportunity to really grab what you're selling right um say you have a hundred customers and a thousand people start banging on your door tomorrow would you be able to handle the inflow of customers Kristen's with me here she said no nina said not one bit nina i love you so much <laughs> um not one bit right uh Always, always, I'm glad y'all are thinking about this and being very, very honest, but always keep this at the back of your mind. As your business continues to grow and you are fire in the game, um, always have this question at the back of your mind so that you can always position your business, right, to always be able to handle going to the next level, all right? But lucky for all of us in the room, we're going to unpack how we do this so you're not making it up. Another question, will your manual processes slow you down? Right. Say, say for whatever reason, whatever you're selling, um, maybe you can't handle it or you like you think you can inch through with well, your manual processes, the things that you do today by hand. Right. Anything you do today by hand, will they slow you down? Will orders fall through the cracks? <laughs> so say you got the products on the shelf. Right. <laughs> but when this kind of volume comes through. Uh, will orders fall through with the cracks and you miss out on money? Will there be miscommunication? And I'm intentionally asking these questions, right? Because there are so many nooks and crannies to your business. And that is these are the things you have to think about when you think about scale, right? And again, scale is different from growth. Growth is when your revenue is increasing. That's beautiful. But it could mean that your expenses are increasing, right? At the same rate or even more. So your profit is not better, right? Um, I'm gonna check the chat. I see we got some buzz. Kristen said, "Woo, <laughs> yeah." I mean, but these are real things, right? We have to audit ourselves. Y'all in the rooms, y'all already ahead of the game. I promise. Will your operations turn into confusion? So say you can hold your breath, right? Put your leggings on, suck it in, y'all. You know, put your good bra on, your good bra on, and get through it for one day, right? <laughs> but will you find that your operations turn into confusion, right? Everybody, I'm sure, has answered no <laughs> to I'm not ready for it. Or yes, things are falling through the cracks, right? So one mindset principle I want all of you to have and take away, please write this down, is that rule number one to scale um, is to understand that scalability is about capacity and cap capability. Capability we get, right? Every business owner said, I'm fired at this right here. I'm calling the game with this right here. I love doing this right here. So I'm not even questioning your capability, Black women. Um, but I do question your capacity, right? And so we need to get out of the habit of doing it all, right? We got to get out of the habit of trying to be superwoman and convincing people that we are, right? And then being upset when they don't understand that we need them to check on us, right? <laughs> and I want you to, to uh, position your business to have capacity for the overflow. Somebody write that in the chat. Capacity for the overflow, because we're aiming for it, y'all. Y'all deserve it, and it will come. Keep showing up for yourselves. Keep investing in yourselves. But I need you to have capacity for the overflow. All right, so that's rule number one. Rule number two is to invest in automation. So those of you who have been rocking with me for a minute, um, Asia, Kristen, Nina, you understand that I talk about automation a whole, whole, whole lot. Um, I actually have, if you missed it, if anybody has missed it, um, email me at contact at Casey Richardson, Casey-Richardson.com. Email me at contact at Casey-Richardson.com. And I'll send you some resources, some of my resources around automation. I give you over 120 different um, tools you can leverage for automating your business in a workbook. Um, I've done a webinar on this. It's recorded. So I, I'd be happy to send that uh, your way. 
Um, but again, some people in the room already understand this piece right here. Excuse me, but rule number two is invest in automation. Automation meaning uh, once you hit the button one time for the next 12 months, let's say, right? Let's say you bought the 12 month subscription or something. <laughs> once you hit the button one time for the next 12 months, those processes will occur automatically for you without you lifting a finger. Literally, that does exist. It exists for so many parts of your business in the workbook I'll send you. Um, for those of you who email me, I give you 20 different parts of your business so you don't have to guess it out. <laughs> um, but that's what automation is, right? So that no matter if 50 people come through the door tomorrow, right? Um, the same way my two people were serviced, these 50 people are going to get it too. And I don't have to lift a finger for that, right? That that allows you to achieve scale. Um Thank you. Nine is with me. Position your business for capacity for the overflow. Um, Chris said capacity for the overflow. Amen. All right. So, and just to just to underscore this, because I know some people have missed background on automation, these two rules work hand in hand because we want to invest in products and services that save you time and money, obviously, as well as accommodate much higher volumes in every part of your business. So time and money, everybody gets it, right? And I say all entrepreneurs get that too, whether they decide to invest in it or not, right? They understand that automation saves them time and money, but the piece we don't think about is scale and that it also allows you to accommodate much higher volumes in every part of your business. Every part could be 20 parts of your business, which I tell you about. It could be 40 parts of your business because you really call it this thing and you've been working on it for three years and you've gotten that much better. Right. But that's the big key of it. And the, and the trip part is, y'all, um, and some of y'all already use automation tools. So you understand what I'm saying. The trip part of it is unlike hiring people who naturally have a capacity level. Right. Um, let's say your order is tripled by 10 times tomorrow and you're using people. Right. To manually process these things. You probably have you likely have to hire a lot more people to get it through the door. Right. And that's going to your expenses. Right. Each head costs something. Right. You're not getting you're not getting a two for one deal <laughs> because cousins are working together. Somebody say amen if you understand what I'm saying. I need to make sure y'all hear me on this. But but if you've invested in automation, you will absolutely get the BOGO special because the, the automated zap. I'm going to use that word and explain what it means in a minute. The automated zap doesn't care if it's doing one time to two times or a thousand times or two thousand times. Right. It's going it's going to do what it's supposed to do. Right. And there are very high thresholds for getting to that next level. I mean, literally, you can operate your business on one level of most of this stuff for like three years before you need to upgrade. Right. Um, so that is scale. <laughs> that is scale. And it's so powerful. And, and when you achieve that kind of scale, your inflow is coming in, your revenue is coming in from that 10x uh, customers. Right. But your expenses are not going up. Right. Significantly. So your profit does what? It skyrockets. Right. Nine is with me. She said, amen. Chris is with me. She said, amen. OK, I'm glad y'all are with me. And I mean it. Right. I really want to I really want to make sure uh, y'all understand these points. So you're edified. Um, I, I'm literally literally here uh, to edify you. Um, all right. Rule number three, integrate your systems. Integrate your systems. And I promise that I would explain what zap, zaps mean. Uh, I'll do that in, in this in this point. So a system integration looks like this Say you have a mailing list, right? Um, where you start getting people who are interested in your products or have bought from you before, right? On a mailing list, beautiful, boom, you're able to market to them via email, right? Meaning send them emails, right? Say you take client calls, right? Maybe you do consultations before some of your services are rendered, right? Um, maybe you have some coaching services that you offer and you do client calls, whatever, right? You have that, boom. Um, let's say you also, right, um, push a, a freebie product to people who uh, have been with you for a long time or who bought into a special launch that you did X, Y, Z, right? You can absolutely automate each one of these, right? You can, you can buy ConvertKit or MailChimp or, I mean, there's so many, so many, uh, email marketing automation tools that you can buy. Beautiful, right? You got the workbook, you understand um you can absolutely you can and you should if you have not you can absolutely 
automate this this phone call cadence right if you are having the same types of calls over and over and over again right if you're going through the same email exchange over and over again say hi my name is casey how are you what's your name okay when is your availability okay well i'm a if you're doing all that over you can absolutely automate that a hundred percent automate that um for free okay check out <laughs> Check out the workbook I sent you um, or will send you, right? You can automate that. And then thirdly, right, you have a freebie you want to push to somebody. Maybe it's a coupon code, right? Maybe, right? maybe you're mailing it out. Um, maybe it's a, a digital product offering, whatever, right? Beautiful. You've automated those things. You're killing the game. I'm so proud of you. I mean it. Mwah. Now, next step is integrating that stuff, right? Because if you are having calls with clients and then you're downloading their information and then you're uploading it to MailChimp, you are manually doing that and it takes time. Right. And time is money. Right. If you're sending your customer a freebie, you've had the phone conversation with them, but, but you're like, oh, I forgot to get their address up. Oh, I forgot to get their uh, whatever their email address that they want this sent to whatever. Right. And so you're you're engaging with them again. Right. You're taking that down and you're uploading this to your your freebie distribution um, operation. Uh, this process is fragmented and not integrated. And what you can absolutely do, I promise you, is integrate all of this stuff where it all happens automatically. I promise, all happens automatically. And this is where I'll bring in the Zap concept. So write down the word. Uh, this is a company, Zapier, Z A P I E R. If you're not familiar with the integrations that each of your platforms already have, and a lot of them do have a lot of integrations. So Zoom, for instance, I do my client calls on Zoom. Uh, Zoom has an integration with MailChimp. So literally anybody that I have a call with is automatically added to my email list. How? Because Zoom knows to get their email address, right? It knows to get their phone number, their first name, their last name, and it literally loads them to my MailChimp with the tag I wanted to have. Literally, I don't touch a button for that, right? Um, Zapier is a system, um, a platform that can integrate over today 30,000 platforms, right? It'll continue to grow. 30,000 is huge. Yes, I understand. I agree. Um, but it'll continue to grow. So you can literally go onto Zap and there is a free plan. Uh, we love free. <laughs> There's a free plan that gives you a certain number of zaps a month. It's a perfect amount to get you started. Um, so you tell it to do X, Y, Z, right? Um, you can tell it, hey, when I have a call on this platform and it has most of your platforms loaded, I want you to add them to my mailing list, right? You can tell it to do that. And then you can say, when someone has this call with someone, I want you to automatically, whatever, right? Um, I want you to automatically uh, check them out for this product or whatever. I mean, literally, you can tell Zapier to do anything and it will do anything. So um, by a customer's action, not yours, they say a customer schedules a call with me. I didn't lift my finger yet. Right. Their call is set up. I have the Zoom link sent to my calendar in theirs. I didn't lift a finger. I have their names added to my MailChimp. I didn't lift a finger with the right tag on it. I didn't lift a finger. Right. And I have my freebie sent to them, the automation workbook, um, as well as the automation uh, webinar that I did, right? So they have that as a starter pack, right? They get their palette wet for some business management solutions, right? Um, because either I told Zapier to do that or because I've told, I've told MailChimp that whenever something comes in because of this call, right? Um, and they get this tag, I want you to send out this email that gives them these downloads. Literally, you can do this. Literally, I do this all day. And I love to get my my monthly emails from Zapier that says, you know, it started off like, you have zapped five processes this week or this month. And then the next month, it was like, you have zapped 71 processes this month. And then now we're in the hundreds, right? Um, so it gets very intuitive. And you're going to love the time you're saving um so yeah please set that up integrate your systems and save yourself some time so, so that when 10x walks in the door you ready when you stay ready you don't have to get ready fam <laughs> right so all of these things will happen not in chaos but systemically right and you um i'm not gonna say you're gonna be chilling but you're gonna be happy you have time you're gonna have time to drink the pina colada and call your girlfriend and say girl guess what just happened right that's what we're aiming for uh, Nina said the customer's action, that part. Yeah, absolutely, right? Like you, we, we, and we're gonna get to this point, like keep rocking with me, I promise. Like uh, my whole purpose is to edify you. 
Um, but there's some learning that has to happen, right? Like anybody that's been rocking with me knows that I do not preach get rich quick schemes. Um, I do want you profitable, right? I want you whole, et cetera. Um, but I want you walking in your purpose. I know I want you to know what you're doing and really being called in the game, <laughs> right? So that you can edify your customers the way that I um, aim to edify you, right? And we are all better for the long term. Okay, so I'm gonna stop preaching. I don't know why tonight is a preachy night. Um, I'm in Tanzania, so it's it's later here. <laughs> um, I know it's morning in the in the West Coast and, and afternoon in the East. Um, okay, rule number four is outsource where you can. Um, so, and I wanna I wanna very quickly unpack what outsource when I say outsource what that means, right? Because we're gonna get into a different type of hiring um, in in these ten rules that I'm giving you. But think about this, right? You do not have to be the, the graphics person. You just don't. And for a lot of these projects you're doing, there's literally somebody that'll do it for cents on the dollar, depending on what you want to do, right? Including the printing, right? Um, or, a, or a subscription type service where they're, they're with you on call if you're really pumping out some stuff, right? Because like the hours that you're going to save um, not doing the menial tasks um, is going to be very, very important. Um, you do not have to be the person that packages things, right? I mean, you can literally outsource anything. And I'm not saying, when, I, when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about the things where, where you are creatively birthing something, right? And you are using your, 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 your genius juices, <laughs> right, to... Um, run and operate your business, I'm talking about outsourcing the things that are that are really hard to mess up. You just you just don't have time to do it or you don't need to be wasting time doing it. Right. Or the things that, on the other hand, right, they're not necessarily a part of your core business product, but it's just not your gift. Right. Like if your gift is not uh, sewing patches on stuff, like, please don't do it like like we like you don't need to go through the pain of that when somebody else is really good at it, they can do it very, very quickly, right? If your gift is not um, writing copy even, I'm being very, very serious about this, meaning and copy meaning marketing, right? The words that are used when you write things, right? Uh, social media marketing, uh, articles, blog posts, um, summit registration pages, et cetera, right? You can outsource that. You can literally buy these like uh, digital products that are sold that gives you the templates, right? And you just fill in the blanks. Like I, I want to push y'all to stop trying to do it all yourself because I promise you the hours that you're putting it putting in, if you do some math on how much that costs you per hour where you could have been converting a sale, you know what I'm saying? Or could have been doing a webinar to somebody and getting some coins or could have been on a stage somewhere at a conference, right? And getting some customers. You you are saving so much money and you could have paid somebody else 12 times over at least, okay? So again, I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but please outsource where you can. Um, and I'm not talking about the things that like take away your creative freedoms. I'm talking about the things that you just should not be doing <laughs> as the owner of your company uh, because it's not that deep. OK. Um, all right. We're on to rule number five, which gets us to the middle of where we are. I'm happy my computer is touch screen because my mouse is working. Um, rule number five is have an end to end sales strategy. And again, to level set, we're talking about how to scale your business. So the idea here is not just growing your revenue because that can be linear right as your revenue grows your expenses grows with it right and sometimes even more so then your profit is not necessarily better right we're talking about scale where we're doing this like your revenue grows your expenses are maybe buzzing here <laughs> so it's all coming in profitability uh so rule number five meaning having an end-to-end -end sales strategy is important around scale because you need to contemplate having a strategy for people who are at the beginning of your funnel, right? And funnel means you start off really wide, and once you when it comes out at the bottom, these are the people who have paid, right? Um, so how you how you how you get the attention of people who uh, need your services, but they don't even know it yet, right? They need a solution, don't even know what it needs to look like yet, right? How do you find them? Is it on a billboard? Is it? Um, you know, on Instagram story promotions, right? Is it on LinkedIn, right? Uh, you need to have a strategy for that, right? But you also, right, as you move down the funnel, you need to have a strategy for what you do with the people who now know they have a problem, know they want a solution, but are now comparing what you offer to your competitors, 
right? You need to have a strategy for that, right? And when I say strategy, you've already thought it out on the front end so that you you're automating people through this system because the emails are automated, baby. And the and the and the phone call system is automated, baby. You know, and the freebie sends are automated. Um, but having a strategy so that it is set up systemically um so that you capture them and bring those customers out of the bottom of the funnel right moving moving even further to that right you need to have a sales strategy and, and automate all of this for the people that now have said oh man i've compared casey to um her peers i've, I've compared Kristen um to her peers and now i'm actually considering buying from her right i'm not i didn't come out the front funnel yet but i have some last questions right or some some last things i need to know right and even if it means right you're just getting them to now click on your website a certain page on your website that answers the faq the frequently asked questions right or has some testimonials on there so they start seeing the things that they're looking for i mean think about that is that link showing up on is that the link that's showing up on your instagram page Right. Is that the link that's shown up in your Instagram? Is that the link that's shown up in your in your signature in your email? Right. You need to have a strategy around all of this. You decide what that is. Right. But it should not be you calling somebody six different times over a six month period. And, you know, and hopefully by the sixth time you get a sale. Do that. Grind like love it. Love the passion there. But that's not necessarily strategy. Right. Do that. In addition to that. Right. Because sometimes it's worth it. Right. In addition to that, you need to have some automated strategy that is absolutely integrated that pushes people through this funnel without you lifting the finger. Because if your business 10x is tomorrow, I promise you, you're not going to be able to call all these people for six months, six times each. Oh, okay. come all right if you're still with me please drop a one in the chat we're halfway through i promise you um i'm gonna get you the full thing i just want to edify you like i say um all the time and i mean it um and if you have any questions uh as well let, definitely let me know um i'm happy to answer some what offs all right so we're moving to rule number six but i want to understand that you're still with me all right beautiful asia is here i'm so happy you're here asia uh, Kristen is with me, Nina is with me. Okay, beautiful. So number six is, and we're talking about scale, build strong partnerships, partnerships, partnerships. I'm not talking about going on IG Live once, okay? Build strong partnerships with people or companies that already serve your potential clients. If you want to achieve scale, this must occur. Um, I've had, and these are, these are good questions. So I haven't seen any of you ask these questions on this, on this webinar, but I'm going to bring this up just in case you haven't seen mine. Um, some, some of my clients have said, Hey, Casey, well, you know, I really want to protect my idea. I really want to protect my approach, right. To serving my customers. And I'm afraid that if I like partner with people, they're going to steal my idea. Right. So I'd rather do it by myself and find all these customers by myself. Right. And work it by myself. Right. Um, Y'all don't do that, y'all. Um, Pier One exists, right? And Walmart is still out here slinging lamps, okay? We just know if we were looking for certain things, you know we're going to go to Pier One. If we're looking for other types of things, right, we're going to go to Walmart, right? If I want to be cost effective, right, and get the job done, I'm going to Walmart, right? If I'm buying a house and got some, you know, but they both exist. And it's fine, right? Amazon exists as well. <laughs> and, you know, like, it, 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 it's all good, right? Uh, Etsy exists as well, right? Like, uh, we don't need y'all to be the only people in the market doing what you're doing. Um, and and, and this, is, this is really science that I'm breaking down to you right now. Because, one, you haven't even proven that your strategy works. So if you're the only person in the market offering what you're offering, offering the solution that you're offering, nobody knows if what you're doing even works. It's actually good when you're going into a market that's already proven, right? Offering a product that's already proven, right? Because we actually know people want it. Um, but then two, right? Um, we are complex humans, right? So people need a myriad of things. You don't, you don't just have one line of skincare, right? You don't just have one... Um, one one apparel company that you buy your clothing from right hair products right uh not everyone not not every offering from a, a single provider gets everything right right from a moisture perspective or a detangling perspective right or a stretching perspective or you know whatever right so i get what you're saying but or i get what people are saying when they're thinking that but it's it's not true it's just, and it's a good question right but it's just not true do not be afraid of partnerships 
Um, you are strengthened in these conversations by understanding what, what your peers are doing. Um, just like I'm sharing this with you and it doesn't take anything from me, you, you need to be giving, doing the same thing, right? Uh, giving more than you take. And it just strengthens us as a community. It strengthens us as a tribe. It will strengthen your mastermind groups, et cetera. And, and this is the most important thing in my opinion, um, people, some, some of you might disagree, but it better serves your customers, which is the whole point in the first place, which is the whole point in the first place, place, right? If I'm telling you about business management, right? And I have somebody that I know teaches marketing strategy very, 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 very well, way colder in the game than I can ever be. It is going to serve y'all better. Nina, Asia, Kristen, right? Blessing. It is going to serve y'all. Liana, it's going to serve y'all better if I bring that person into the mix and have them teach you about marketing, right? Because you are thankful to me. You become more loyal because you know I really, really care about you. I've edified you and you get a, you know, <laughs> a whole bang for your book or your time, whatever, right? Um, and I've just increased that person's following probably by two times. Right. So that's how you should think about partnerships. Right. If you find partnerships and, and, and I mean, like real partnerships, y'all plan on long term things. Right. Or big blockbuster type launches. Uh, if you do that, you are doubling or tripling or quadrupling your followers because you are in and you're in your customers. Right. Because you're in front of the people who actually need your services. Right. Who didn't know anything about you before or maybe saw you. But now you're moving them further down the funnel. Right. Um and you spent a lot less effort to get it. They're banking on the credibility of the person they're following. If I bring somebody in, y'all are banking on my credibility, not, not the marketing person. Y'all don't know the market, marketing person, but you show up because you know um, that I'm gonna bring you quality stuff. That's the power of partnerships. You show up in front of, a, of an audience, but it's not a cold audience. Like they're already warmed up and you didn't have to do it, right? Um, so please do that. That's number six, it gets you scale. Again, you don't increase, you don't increase your expenses a lot to get that kind of boost in revenue. Uh, it's very, very clutch. Uh, if you're nervous about it, do it scared. That's the best advice I can give you because <laughs> um, we're moving. Um, and then now we're on to seven. There are only 10, so I'm almost done here. Um, number seven is strategically higher for where you want your company to be rather than where it is today. So this is different from outsourcing. I told you outsourcing is, yeah, like push the mundane stuff out, push the stuff that you're not good out, good at out. I didn't say give somebody the core of your business, right? Just, just stop doing everything. You shouldn't be. Now, this is different in that I'm telling you to strategically hire for where you want your company to be in the future rather than where it is today. So I'm saying bring in the creative juices strategically. Y'all are working together hand in hand. Bring in somebody that's really, really cold in the game in certain areas. Um, and and I'll, get, I'll, I'll illustrate an example for you, right? Um, say that there is this clothing company, right? That sells merchandise with a certain, uh, not aesthetic, but a certain message to it, right? Uh, it has an uplifting type of uh, personality to the, the company brand, right? And say in the future, they want that company to not just sell apparel, but to be a hub, right? Like a community, like a safe space, a landing place, right? For people who resonate, right? With the message and the mission of the company, right? Well, that does, that's not happening today and you can't build a following like that. But say that, say that, um, that CEO, right? Strategically hired for somebody who could engage, right? Today. Not that they exist today, but they, they hire the person. They're not, the CEO is not having to spend their time that they don't have, right? Thinking about all the odds and ends, but they're strategically hiring for where they want the company to be. And say in three months, right, you, you slowly see a trickle and then boom, in three months, you actually have a hub of 150. Not just the mailing list people you market to, but like literal, like engaged people talking, laughing, sharing their deepest, darkest, whatever, crying together, like literally a tribe has formed, right? That is strategic hiring. Right. And that can show up in so many ways. Right. So this this anecdote, this illustration I just gave you was actually something I did um, for my apparel line, Freedom and Fragility. And I and I hired a, a chief engagement officer. I, I hired one. Right. And I knew it would take time to see the yields, but I knew that I wanted it to be deeper than a clothing line. I knew I wanted to for real whole whole healing space for people. Right. A safe space that it could always come to. And. Um, that is paying dividends. And yes, there is well over 100 people now that are a part of that that in, that knit, close-knit community, right? So um, I mean what I'm saying. You got to put some skin in the game, put some money in the game, put your money where your mouth is, right? 
But this piece is important, y'all, because it's not going to fall out of the sky. It is not going to fall out of the sky. And we have to stop taking, um, we have to stop settling <laughs> for what, what, what is, right? We just move it along and figure it out as we go. And it is like, y'all know what's keeping y'all up at night. Y'all know the dreams y'all had when y'all were little girls. Y'all know it has not left. Y'all know, y'all know what y'all visions are. And you can articulate it. Start hiring for that vision, to, to manifest that vision and watch it come to pass, all right? Um, so that gives you skill because you're not having to deviate from one thing to do this. You just hire the brains behind that piece, right? And let them do what they do. All right, um, thank y'all for rocking with me. Mean it, so we're down to the last three. Um, rule number eight is raise capital. And that can be through crowdfunding, grants, loans, venture capital, et cetera. Um, I have a finance background. I know about this stuff a lot. I'm not going to assume that everybody understands the different pockets of this. I'm going to high level explain what I mean by this. So um, some people bootstrap, right? And bootstrap means they're taking their own savings, right? And, and funding their business, right? Um, they didn't raise loans for debt, debt forward or et cetera, right? Um, and to supplement that bootstrapping, they do crowdfunding. So if you've ever seen like, uh, and I mean this, right? And I'm sensitive to this, right? Um, there might be a funeral to pay for and people go on, I think it's GoFundMe, right? And say, hey, you know, can we get your help? That is crowdfunding. Um, what people don't do enough of is crowdfunding for their businesses. Um, we got to start pouring into each other and there is a willingness for us to do it, right? But pride keeps people from collecting those funds. Um, go to Kickstarter, y'all write that down. It's a company, Kickstarter, it's one word. Um, creatives on the line, y'all will love this because it's actually created for creators, <laughs> for creatives, um, where crowdfunding can take place to manifest these people's dreams, right? To, to feed into that, right? Um, Kristen says, so true. I'm glad you're with me, sis. Yeah. Um, so if you're bootstrapping, know that if you do crowdfunding, that is still a part of that, right? Because you don't owe anybody anything back. That, that is the uh, the upside of, of, of bootstrapping, right? You don't owe anybody anything. You don't have pressure on you, um, which can cause anxiety around, oh my gosh, I have to pay this, these people back, right? Um, and crowdfunding, you don't, you don't owe anybody anything, right? Um, so that's one method of, of of raising capital. You must raise capital. I said one more time, you must raise capital, okay? But that's one way to do it. Another way is through grants, right? Um, so you know, fill out the application and take as many shots as you can give. Again, with grants, you don't don't own anything back, but you have to tell your story. With crowdfunding, not necessarily. You fill up a paragraph, right? And people are gonna do what they do. With grants, you have to put a little more meat behind it. So having a business plan that's thorough um, is important, right? Understanding what your mission is and how it impacts your community is absolutely important. And if you don't understand that already as a business owner, you're not doing it right. Um, so I encourage you to get that down on paper ASAP um, if you don't already have it. And then loans are different, right? Loans, um, yes, you do the paperwork. Yes, you tell the story. You absolutely need to have the business plan. Um, you need to have a view of your finances and what you'll make in the future, right? But the thing with loans is that um, you will have to pay it back. Right. And, and, and as I'm explaining these things, please understand that I'm not saying anything is better than the other. Right. I'm explaining it thoroughly so that you can decide what is best for your circumstance. And none of this is going to be comfortable. None of this is going to be comfortable, but it's necessary. Right. This is a part of the game right here. Uh, and we all have to do it as entrepreneurs. Right. Um, so, yeah, you have to pay a loan back. Now, um, loans are different from venture capital in that. When you get a loan, you still own 100% of your business. 100% of your business, okay? Even if you default on the loan, right? Meaning you don't pay it back, you still own 100% of your business, okay? Venture capital is different in that. And some of you might've seen terms thrown around like VC funding, right? They mean venture capital funding. Um, and this type of, of fundraising, of capital raising, People are giving you money and they take a percentage ownership in your firm. You, you all negotiate and decide what that is. The more money they put up, typically, the higher their percentage is, right? Um, if you want to keep a majority stake, right, you need to have 51%, right? <laughs> you want to keep 51% of it, but that's the trade-off there. Do you have um, something to pay back? Nope. 
because people have bought just for a piece of your company, right? Um, is there an interest rate you have to worry about? Nope, because people have bought into your company and they just own that piece, right? And uh, if they want to get their cash back, right, you can buy them back out if you want to take 100% back or they can sell their piece to anybody else and then somebody else becomes a part owner. And you might say, that is crazy. What do you mean? What do you mean? I will tell you what I mean. That's how stocks work. <laughs> if you own a stock in a company, say it's Apple, Apple, you have shareholders equity. You have literally injected equity into the company, right? Um, and you own a piece. Now, if it's half of a half of a half a percent, you still own a piece, right? And anytime you don't want to have that ownership, you can sell your stock. We do this every day, y'all. And you don't have to sell it back to Apple. You can sell it to Joe Blow across the street. And now Joe Blow owns, has, has the ownership and you have your money back. Right? So that's how these work. I want you to be educated on the different types and what it looks like. Um, and you can pursue any of this. You can pursue a mix of it. Um, no one will turn you down alone because you have 10 grants. That's not how it works, right? Um, but you need capital. You, we need capital, ladies, uh, so that we can invest in the right things in our business. All right. So I'm gonna stop harping on that. But just know, I, yeah, I have a finance background. I have a, um, I'm, I'm educated in finance as well, so I know this stuff uh, through and through. So I'm happy to give you more insight if you need it. Just shoot me an email. So rule number nine is invest in technology. Once you raise capital, you have the funds to do this. But it's so so crucial. You cannot scale without it. We cannot depend on manual labor. Um, and outside of automation. There are so many things we need to, to scale our business outside of operation, like so that these things can literally be the brains behind what we do, right? So I'm talking to you from Tanzania at 9.49 p.m., right? And you guys hear me and you're with me, you're interacting with me on the, um, on the U.S., on the North American continent in the U.S., right? That's because I invested in technology. Right. Webinar Jam is what you are inside of right now. It makes this process very, very seamless and, and, and clean. Right. Um, I can I can I can turn this into a product if I want to. And, you know, all this stuff. Right. But it cost me something. It cost me something. It cost me a couple of hundred dollars, to be very frank with you. Right. Um, raise your capital so that you can invest in technology. But I can do these types of things from anywhere around in the world because I've invested in technology. This is not automation. I'm showing up. I'm live. Right. I've said your name. So, you know, that so that you understand that I'm live. Uh, but invest in technology. If you are selling some type of products. Right. And you are and you are paying a certain amount to get um, different things made, you know, outside of your household or whatever. Fine. Beautiful. But if you want to scale. Right. Um, you need to look into the cost of investing in the technology that will allow you to do it. Right. Um, with greater efficiency. Right. And at a lower cost overall. Right. Um, but you need the capital to be able to do that. Uh, anybody that's taking digital courses, that is that is technology. That's not automation. That's technology, right? So technology looks like so many different things. If it's if it's setting up really quality lights, right? If it's buying the right type of computer, right, that can handle um, the operating capacity that you have, or buying the right type of computer. Right, that can handle the creative needs that you have. I mean, any of these things, guys. Like, but you must invest in technology to scale, right? Because what what worked for your three customers will not work for your three thousand, and we are going to have overflow. We just need the capacity to capture it, right? All right, number ten. I haven't seen any questions, so if y'all have them, I'm, I'm about to wrap up. So <laughs> um, please drop them if you have them. Number ten. Um, and this is important. Um, and this one kind of hits home to me. So I'm going to unpack this uh, differently from a scientific way just so it hits home with you. But you, you, you need to obtain a strategic advisor. So it is true. It is, it is absolutely true that um, among our counterparts, I'm going to include men in, men in this, uh, women do not have mentors. They don't. Um, that's in the workforce as well as in entrepreneurship, right? Um, and that hurts women in entrepreneurship because you spend uh, nine years of your life learning what could have taken you a year and a half, right? Had you had a mentor, right? Um, strategic advisors um, take it a whole nother level up because while you have a business, y'all, and you have a vision, 
strategic advisors are light years ahead of where you are today. I mean, light years ahead of where you are today. And they will literally pull you, like have this gravity that'll pull you where you think you're not ready for, right? <laughs> um, they will put the, the right kind of pressure on you to innovate your business as you need to, right? Like people who are selling like Polaroid cameras and refuse to shift and see the change, you know, in times like they're dead, they're gone, right? They're, they're gone, right? Um, and strategic advisors, like they are literally light years ahead of where you are and they pull you along. Um, and, and, and this takes some investment. So that's why I talked about the capital before this. Like this stuff does not come cheaply, um, but it is so, 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 so critical. Um, I, and I'm, I'm gonna share a very real story with you. I had, um, and I've invested, I, I, I invest in, so I invest in courses, I invest, <laughs> um in, in in help right but i also invest heavily one of my biggest investments um is in strategic in, in my strategic advisor um but it, it is literally worth every penny like i'll never forget when i had my first conversation with my strategic advisor um again that i pay for it. and he said to me he said casey you fired but it's time for you to think bigger like you got to think big and i'm like, like y'all <laughs> Like when I say I was not ready, but I needed that, you know, because what I was doing, and y'all can be able to relate to this, right? What I was doing already exceeded what my parents could vision for me, envision for me. And they were so, so happy, right? What I was doing was already bigger than what a lot of people in my community had seen, right? So, so you're talking about a big fish in a small pond, right? Where you, like, it, I'm just depending on me to keep thinking of stuff. And when I had somebody to tell me, tell me that like, yeah, you like, that's cute. But it's time for you to think big because I was already doing everything I knew to do, right? And literally dropping stuff that I never knew existed, technology that I never knew existed, approaches and strategy, right? That I never knew existed. Um, it's worth every penny. And it literally, it literally has taken, um, and I know I was known on a global scale within my company before, but even name recognition, right? And what I'm doing right now, right? Um, it took it in a whole other direction, right? And partnerships with corporate, because of the advice I got from my strategic advisor. And again, this costs money, right? So that's why I am telling you, raise the capital, you're gonna need it. But we're talking about scale now. <laughs> we're talking about scale. Like if you are going to scale, right? You 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 need to, you need to obtain a strategic advisor. Um, Asia said, true story. Yeah, Kristen said, so true. Um, so that is, Scaling your business. I hope these 10 rules um, made sense to you. And even if some things didn't resonate today, I hope that you wrote them down, right? So that when you're ready, when you're ready for them, right? When you're ready to step into it, um, you have a roadmap, right? You have a baseline, um, but do it, right? And you don't need to be a rocket scientist at all. Um, don't wait until everything is perfect. <laughs> Just do it scared. So, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to offer to you. The chat is still open. I'm gonna leave it open for a couple of seconds, but I do want to give you something. Um, let me just pop it to you. Okay, here it is. Oh, I just deleted it on accident. Oh, y'all, I'm so hurt. <laughs> okay, well, um, I wanted to give you something. Let's see if I can pull it in. Oh yeah, I can pull it in. Okay, just forgive me for a second. Um, so I'm going to give you this overview of the Blaze Business Intensive. It's a two pager. Um, it gives you some insight on um, the six the six week signature program that I offer that um, definitely gives you a 360 um, hand holding um, teaching around really, really getting your business plan robust, really, really doing competitive analysis, really, really um, getting your budget really, really tight, uh, as well as your projections, um, really robust stuff in there. Uh, okay, let me not delete it this time. Okay, I'm sharing it. <laughs> so there, you guys can download it. Um, it really helps you to understand what your most profitable skills are, um, which is important, right? Like you shouldn't, like I mentioned, I do not, I do not preach get rich quick but I keep it very, very real about leveraging your profitable skills because smiles won't pay the bills, okay? Um, but 
um, passion combined with skill combined with training will, right? So a <clears throat> uh, very robust program, uh, lots of love, <laughs> lots of uh, feedback I still get from all of my uh, students. I have people enrolled in the program right now. So um, yeah, I wanted to share that for you um, just to kind of chew on for the next hour and a half. Um, I'm offering a discount if you enroll in the program. Just make sure you use the link that's shown in here. Uh, the discount will go away in an hour and a half. The enrollment period will be open beyond that time, so you absolutely, absolutely can join, right? Um, but I just wanted to share that with you now. Uh, this stuff I talked about today, like that's the type of insight you get in the six six week program. Um, the difference from what I've just went through today with you in the program is that um, it really, really makes sure that you apply what you learn real time to your business. And it really gives you templates on applying those things. And it really um, holds your hand right uh, through some of the most complex technical, right, um, scary parts of business management, right? Um, so this is talking to you. It's almost like a lecture, right? And I make sure that you're with me, right? But the, the, the program is different in that um, you really, really uh, apply the stuff real time to your business. You build out a very robust uh, business plan. I have office hours every single week reserved for students. Um, I call it Wine Down Wednesday because I show with my wine. You can too. It's up to you. <laughs> But I answer uh, real time questions. So it's real coaching that goes on. Um, you get a tribe that comes along with it when we've gone through the program as well. And, you know, just accountability partners and all of that. Uh, I mean, so much, y'all. <laughs> um, so there, 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 there's a lot of support that comes with it. Um, workbooks, templates, all of these things. Um, so it's different than this right here, right? This is a taste so that you can get a, a feel of my style. I think it's very important that what you learn is culturally relevant. Right, and that you are seen, and that, that examples are used that you can understand. Otherwise, what's the point? Right. Um, so this is my style. It is me teaching all of those things. It is me showing up on Wednesdays. Um, it's, it's 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 me that shows up. Every single student gets a jump start session with me because I want to understand your business. I want to understand where you're going. And I get so excited about these things. There has never been a time where I've had this meeting. And I'm not like, yo, we got to pull up in, in three weeks so I can make sure you're doing what we just talked about because I see your vision, right? I mean, I get excited with you. Um, I love, love, love coaching and consulting. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot a lot more that comes with the program, um, but at least you have a, a taste of what my teaching style is like. So, hopefully, this information is helpful. Um, I see some questions. Oh, Nina, Nina said the notebook is full. I'm so happy to hear that. Asia has a question. I love it. What's the best way to find your strategic advisor? Fire, 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 fire. Good question, Asia. Um, that's a good point in that I haven't, I hadn't appreciated enough. Um, it's not easily advertised, right? Even when I think about how I found my, my strategic advisor, it was because I, like I mentioned to you, and I mean it, like I enroll in courses, I enroll in conferences. Like if I'm gonna be cold, I need to be cold for real, right? Not just my opinion, right? Um, I, I speak at conferences as well, and I make sure I network with, um, you know, the other speakers that are there. And so it, it came through that type of, of networking that I found my, my strategic advisor and, and dude is fire, right? Um, so network and then was said, hey, can you please speak at this conference? Went into that, but I was networking even within that. And then the CEO of the, of the company that threw the conference, he's just like, yo, you know, like you're pretty cold, you know? <laughs> And um, he wanted to, yeah, it was just, you know, this electricity or whatever. And um, yeah, and I ended up hiring him as my strategic advisor because that was one of the services he offered. And from the from day one, I mean, just literally catapulted me in another whole other, um, mm, uh, what do you call that, torque? Yeah, I think that's torque when like these things, these cars go real fast. 
Um, so it's not it's not as it's not as uh, clear out there. It's a very very good point, but but, but the, there now that I think about it, I think there's a solution that needs to be created to make it easier. But um, search keywords. You can search keywords on different things. So like nowadays, Instagram, for instance, is using people in the names part just so they show up in in, in searches. They put in right advisor, right, or they'll put in. Uh, business plan plan strategies or pivot strategies or whatever, right? So you can search it that way. Um, you can search it online that way. It's not as easy as it should be. Um, send me a follow up email. I'm very happy to help you there. I'm an advisor to black women, right? But um, it's, it's so many levels to this stuff, right? Um, and, and being an advisor, I have a network of other advisors, right? So for different pockets of expertise that are needed, right? Um, I'm able to point people into the right direction. So today, uh, especially for black advisors, is really about being plugged into a network, right? That they can point you in the right direction. Um, yeah, and, and and that's another benefit of having partnerships. And I mean that, y'all. Like we gotta we gotta get comfortable being uncomfortable, like getting in these partnerships and stuff, because it's just so much fruit. Like one plus one is not two; it is eleven every time. I've never seen it not be eleven. <laughs> um, so do that, but um, yeah, like like. Uh, Send me an email if you want me to help you find the right type of advisor that you want, right? Like my when I do advisory, um, it's it's typically on business management, right? Um, and finance, obviously. Uh, I was advising this firm in in Kenya, uh, Africa, right? Nairobi, Kenya, and that turned into a job, right? They're like, yeah, chief credit officer, you C-suite, and I'm like, yeah, bet, you show right, right? And, and I am, I literally do that every day for them now in a very entrepreneurial fashion. I'm literally building stuff from the ground up, right? A strategic advisor, um, but they're different types, right? The, the strategic advisor I have um, has a marketing background. And again, see, I mentioned before, I could pull somebody in that knows marketing through and through, right? Because that's not Casey's, um, that's not my, that's not, not what my degree is in. I understand it, right? It's not what my degree is in. So this guy, the stuff that he brings, right, is is cold, <laughs> you know, and it's saving me so many years, right? Um, so it just depends on what you need as well. So happy to help there, Asia. Would you consider doing a course on Zapier? Smiley face. I love how you did the, the smiley face at the end, Kristen. <laughs> um yeah i can actually i think that's a good idea um hit me up and let me know if you want me to do that for like a, a tribe you already have i'm happy to help like i know you're into photography as well as some, some self-care stuff now too um i do that a lot uh, i'm doing one soon on loans and grants and stuff for a group um so if you want it to be like a huddle with a tribe you already have i'm happy to to do that um Fiona, i'm proud of you and this is it Tear, real tears. Thank you so much, Liana. Um, I'm I'm very happy that uh, this resonated with you. I'm happy to do this, right? It's an honor, and we have to do it, man. Like I don't know why I'm so preaching today, but for real, if in 40 years our sons and daughters deal with the same stuff we're dealing with today, it's because we didn't do enough today <laughs> when we sat in these positions. Period. I I, I mean it, right? I, I mean that like somebody didn't do enough to do enough when they went into the boardroom, when they finally got there. Right. When they finally saw that the Wizard of Oz was this really small little man who didn't know a lot of stuff. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's an honor to do this. Y'all. Y'all are the dope ones. OK, I'm six minutes over. Anybody that's been on these things know I like to cut it at the, the top. Um, but y'all have the download. Um, I hope y'all have the link to the discount. If you want that discount again, um, only good for 90 minutes. Uh, let's see how many minutes are left. All right. You got 81 minutes and 35 seconds. Cool. Um, but yeah, this was this was dope. Uh, y'all have my my email address, so hit me up if you need anything, and I will let y'all go. And integrations of it all. <laughs> Nine and one decision too. <laughs> I hear y'all. I hear y'all. Okay, I'll um. Y'all know I'm a planner. I got my 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 uh, sessions mapped out for the rest of the year. Literally, like Chris and I'm not playing. But um, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely consider that one. Um, but for real, like a one-off with a with a smaller group, I'm happy to do. I do those uh, pretty frequently, like some specialized things. Um, all right, 
Love y'all. Mean it. Have a very, very good day. Bye.